Isn't he so cute in here? So it's been one day since I filmed the update. Today is Barely's due date, and I think she's in labor. How you doing? Excuse me, Marge. She's got a decent little goo trail going on. Her udder's not that big, but historically, she doesn't make enough milk for triplets, so I'm not super surprised that we don't have a big udder. Barely is my doe that has a very extensive history of needing assistance during birth. Every single time she's kitted, this is her fourth kidding, she has needed pretty serious interventions. And I don't know what the real cause is. I have an assumption that she's just got a malformed uterus, but I don't actually know. So this will be her last kidding on my farm. I do have plenty of does that don't have issues like that. But she has some precious cargo on board. She's the first doe to deliver our nefarious sired babies. And nefarious is our blue cactus buck. So if you are familiar with the blue cactus herd, nefarious is out of Lily and Vader. And technically he's a star bee buck, but he doesn't have like the paperwork on file yet. She's looking good. I'd like to give her the best opportunity to get the babies in a good position on her own, which is why I still have her out with the herd. If they can move around, they're going to be able to get the babies in position better, having more place to roam around, more space to roam around. So far, she seems okay to be out here with them. We do have a kidding stall all set up and ready, should she need it. She probably will. This is Stormy. This is one of her triplets from last year. <laughs> As you can see, we have moved to the kidding stall. And that was just because Barely seemed to be wanting to be a little bit more away from the herd. She kept coming in the little hallway that I have here. And my hallway is about the same width as this kidding stall, so. But we've been in here about a half an hour and she, she's pretty wide-eyed. She's breathing pretty fast. Her nostrils are flared and she has not chewed her cud. So because of her history, I am going to do a superficial check, which means I'm going to go in very shallowly with non-gloved hands. My hands are clean and uh, just to see if I can tell what's going on as far as her dilation goes. Normally I'd wait about an hour without chewing cud before I went in, but 30 minutes just because of her history is good for barely. I know. We're just gonna check really shallow. I know, I know. She's fully dilated. There's a bubble, but I don't feel anything in the bubble, which per her history means we have a malpositioned baby. Right out the gate, huh? I did expect this out of her, unfortunately, which is why I'm so chill, because we knew this was coming, didn't we? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna glove up. You are fully dilated, which I'm grateful for. Are you gonna push on your own? I would love that. hard. Is that, is that just a head? You've done that before. Huh? You've done just a head before. Yep, that's a head. Let's see what we can get. Okay. I really prefer when I'm assisting for the does to lay down because when they're standing sometimes gravity works in the opposite direction. The kids just sort of sit down in the belly. The kid has its forehead at the birth canal and not its nose and not its, not its feet. That's why we're kind of stuck. So what I have to do is go in even further, which is going to be painful. Um, and I've got to, I've got to go slow. She's definitely got more than one baby in here. Good girl. Are you pushing? Good girl, are you pushing? 
Are you pushing? Good girl. Go ahead. The, the nose is up now. Are you gonna push that out? Good girl. We've got one foot and a nose, which is fine. The baby seems in good position, so I'm not gonna push harder. We'll let you go a little bit longer. You were starting to move it. Its head is up now, look. I do wonder about her sometimes, if she's just so used to being helped that she doesn't really know how to do. Push it out. It's right there, right now the nose is up. You should be good. That's a push. Very good. You do that. I would love for you to do that. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. Very good. You're making progress. I see a bubble. That's good. Pop the water bag, I saw it. Good girl. The color of the fluid looks good. Baby's not stressed. That's what we like to see. She's gonna be distracted by that for a little while. It's no problem. We have two feet. You have two feet and a nose. What am I even doing? <laughs> You've never done that. Proceed. That is a little baby. You can get, you can push that out. This baby's probably that big. That's a push. Good girl. to the pile here. bubbles coming out right now which is not very unusual of barely to have a whole bunch of water bubbles in sometimes that means they're done I kind of doubt it with her I kind of doubt it we'll see after she stands up yeah you're gonna lick them for now Yeah. 
go. Good girl. Hey, okay. can I bump you real quick? Do you mean to tell me you are this fluffy? That's okay. You want to know why? You have a little udder. Yeah. Yeah, I think Barely's done it, twins. She's just a wide load. She's a, she's over conditioned to begin with. Look at all that. Yeah, she is. Good morning. It's another beautiful day. I saw the baby goats on camera this morning. They look like they're doing good, but of course we've got to check on them. So our neighbor's cows got out last night. He keeps quite a decent sized herd of black Angus. So they're not small and they got into my garden. So that's going to be on a different video. It's the damage really isn't bad. There's, you could hardly call it damage. But they made some holes and left some fertilizer, as they do. Good morning. I need to wean you guys. You guys are big. <laughs> Hello, Mama's goats. I hear some little voices. Hello. Oh, hi, Barely. You coming in? Your ears are so stinking cute. <laughs> so here's the little boy. His ears are a little funny as far as the directions that they're pointing, but that should straighten out over time. It's probably just the way he was situated inside. They're both horned because Barely and Nefarious are both horned. But this little boy got his mama's blue eyes and a lot of her coloring. He's got a lot of nice white swirling and he's adorable. And he's, there, was a, there was a hold on him before he was even born. So he's been claimed. Now these, these babies are tinier than the babies that we normally have born here. I want to weigh them. Our, you know, our herd sire Havoc, he throws really big babies. Usually his babies are over four pounds. Sometimes they're up to five pounds, which is a lot. I don't think these guys are even four, but these are nefarious babies. So they're different in the best way. So I have this hanging the scale with this sling, and this is what I'm gonna use to weigh them. And I may keep weighing them periodically. I generally don't uh, because I don't find a need, but I'm a little bit concerned with just the way that Barely's udder has not really filled up. They don't seem overly hungry, but I wanna make sure that they're getting enough. <laughs> Isn't he so cute in here? He, he barely fits. Okay. And he's bigger than, he's bigger than the little girl. So, what have we got? Oh, three pounds, 3.8 pounds. He actually weighs a little more than I thought he would. More like your average Nigerian and less like a Havoc Nigerian. Havocs are big. And then this little sugar pie. This is our little girl. We're definitely keeping her. We purchased Nefarious to throw improvements on the udders in our herd. And so this little girl, she's the first step towards that. She's going to have her grandma's udder, we hope, which is a good one. A real good one. I can already tell just looking at these babies the different quality that they are. Usually it's hard to tell with baby goats until they do what's called unfolding, until they really kind of stretch out and start to grow like the shape that they're gonna take. But I can already tell that these babies have a lot more width than what I'm used to in my herd. And they're definitely going to be improvements. I haven't named her yet. Normally I'll put the name down here. I don't know what I'm gonna call her. I do have a running name list. I just need to pull it out and compare and see what I think. They're both gorgeous, super gorgeous. I just love them. Let's see what you weigh. Oops. <laughs> oh, it's in, it's in kilograms. I was like, one pound, no way. Hang on, unit. 
pounds. All right, I don't know how that happened. I need to reweigh, brother. There's no way you weigh as much as him. But you're smaller. How? She's weighing in at three pounds, 3.8 pounds as well. I don't know, maybe he's not. Maybe he's just got that buck, like stockiness to him. She's such a little angel. You are. You're precious. You gotta get used to me and that camera. Okay. So new babies are exciting, but we cannot neglect mama's needs. She actually had the best birth that she's ever had on my farm. I did have to go in there and kind of barely adjust little girl's chin. She was coming out basically head first like, like that and her chin was tucked down. So I just pulled her little chin up and her little feet came out and barely did a really good job. I was just sort of holding the progress of her pushes as little girl came out, but really that is the least intensive assistance that Barely's ever needed, which I'm grateful for. So she's probably all right, but we just make sure she's eating, make sure she's drinking, and I'll put my hands on her udder and make sure everything feels good there. I don't want any lumps. I don't want it to be super hard, and I don't want it to be hot. It feels good. I do not plan on milking Barely at all this year. Her job is going to be to raise these babies and to mow my grass. She does have my least favorite udder, but that's why we brought Nefarious on, so this little girl can be a massive improvement. So who's next? Clover is going to give birth, or her due date is March 11th. She's going to have some standard Lamanches for us. Tempest is due March 12th. She has Nefarious babies on board, too. And then Breezy's in the first week of April. Freezy's a mini La Mancha. She's half Nigerian and half La Mancha. And I have two due dates for her because I'm not sure if she's going to gestate more like a Nigerian or gestate more like a standard. And there's about a five-ish day difference in how long their pregnancies are. So somewhere in the first week of April. She's gonna be the last one to kid and I think she's the one I'm anticipating the most. Very exciting. So I'll take any name suggestions you have for that little girl. We kind of have a weather theme going on, a little bit of a chaos and pandemonium theme. You know what, pandemonium has been a name that's on, it's on my list and we would call the goat panda. That's a possibility. I'm not gonna say that I'm married to it quite yet, but I like it. She does look like a little bear, not like a panda bear. She didn't get any of her daddy's black and white. <laughs> Keep watch of the community tab. That's likely where I'll make the name announcement. And I'm sure I'll do it in a video sometime soon too. Thanks so much for being here and stick around. I've got a cow story to tell you soon. <laughs>